Hello everyone, I'm Bahar and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about how our skincare regimen and our routine and the products that we choose can change from season to season. So for example, I get a lot of clients who will ask um, or even on social media will ask questions such as, you know, as I'm going from summer to fall, I notice that my skin is a little bit drier or I may need to change what I'm using now. I've been using the same products for the last five years, 10 years, um, and so on, but I'm noticing that the results aren't the same. Uh, my skin doesn't feel the same with the same products that I've been using for a long time. And I may need to change them, and I don't know how to change them. How do I choose um, the right formulations, or you know, where do I go next? So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Most of the time throughout the year, our skin type is the same. I'll talk about the difference between skin type and skin condition specifically in another video. But the majority of the year, our skin type is generally the same. For me, my skin is normal. It's always sensitive, which is my skin condition and skin type, but I'll go into that in another video. But my skin is always sensitive and typically normal with oil in the um, t-zone so combination so normal to combination for me what I use throughout the year if I can use them without any reactions and without any adverse effects generally works all year long now I may need to increase my products for keeping down shine and oil more in the summertime because of heat, because of humidity, and because of um, prolonged, um, you know, being outdoors and things like that, that you will tend to get a little more oily. And so I might use more oil control products during the summertime, but for the most part, everything else on my face, moisturizers, eye creams, things like that, will typically stay the same throughout the year, unless I happen to be testing or experimenting on something. But generally, whatever works will work for me all year long. Now, as I get into the winter months, and if we have a very cold winter, I live in Northern Virginia, so we tend to not have extreme cold, um, but some winters are milder than others. So if we have a very cold winter, I may have chap lips, I may notice um, the need to exfoliate more and to use a more um, a thicker moisturizer and that's okay and I'll have to make changes accordingly maybe everything else that I use is the same but my moisturizer or my exfoliator um, exfoliation product may change now for someone who is dry you can be dry all year long, but in the winter time, you're even drier. Um, you may notice that your skin, no matter what you're using, all year long is fine, but in the winter time, you can't seem to hydrate enough. Um, and you can notice maybe dry patches, or your skin just looks thirsty, it's dehydrated. So you may need to make some changes. Someone who is oily all year long can be oily, and use products that can combat maybe acne, breakouts, or general oil control um, under makeup and primers and that sort of thing. But in the winter time, you finally get some relief. Maybe you breathe a sigh of relief that you are uh, not so anxious about that oil production. Uh, whereas in the summertime, you may joke and say that they could fry chicken on your face. You, some people are that oily. Uh, and if you're lucky and you're normal all year long, then that's great. And I certainly hope you're not taking um, that for granted because some people who are normal and don't have dry or oily or breakouts and that sort of thing um, tend to take it for granted. And then they think, well, I'm fine. I'm normal. I don't need to do a cleanser. I don't need to do a moisturizer. And they truly don't. Um, and that to me means you're, you still, your skin, even though it's normal and you don't have any specific issues to be concerned about, you still need to take care of the integrity of your skin and the health of your skin and keep that up. We want to make sure that if you do have healthy skin and you're blessed with good, healthy, um, non-problematic skin, that you want to keep that going as you age. So how do we understand where we need to go in terms of 
revamping our skincare regimen and our routine. For the most part, I would say you need to take stock of what you're currently doing. There's one extreme versus the other. There are those people that I mentioned who don't do anything at all, and then there are those people who have a major regimen all year long. And then there are those people that fall in between. And those people who fall in between tend to understand that there are some differences, but they just don't know which way to go. So my initial suggestion to people is that if you notice that whatever you're using um, or lack thereof, whatever you're not using, is making is having an impact on your skin health, then that's the time where you need to pay attention and take stock of the current situation. If you notice that you have congestion, which is light bumps under the surface of the skin, nothing that can be considered a whitehead, a pimple, or a blackhead, which is a pore that is filled with dirt and debris that can look dark, as in the blackhead, or um, nothing that is a cyst that can be pink or red or raised, which is a larger bump that you know may be coming to a head, if it's nothing like that and you just see some bumps under the surface of the skin, that can be typically called congestion. If you notice that or you notice some rough patches of dryness, those are signs that you may need to work on your exfoliation. If you don't do anything to exfoliate and remove the dead skin off the surface of your skin, it's important to do that. And there are many different ways to do that and I'll go into exfoliation in a separate video. But that tells you that you need to help your skin along in order to remove the dead skin, allow any dirt and debris and bacteria to come up to the surface, up and out, and to really replenish and allow that fresh new skin to come to the surface. If you notice that you are either too oily or that the oil production is less than what you're typically used to, you may need to pay attention to your products that you're using. If you are using something that is very geared towards summer, meaning you are very oily during the summer, astringents, um, toners, any product with salicylic acid or anything that you're using to specifically dry up acne or breakouts during the summer, you may need to tone that back in the fall and the winter time. You don't wanna necessarily use something that's going to strip your skin of its natural oils and its natural hydration. Um, especially if you don't need it. If you, if you notice that your skin isn't acting up so much, then why kill it? <laughs> we don't want to treat something that isn't there. It's fine to treat something while you're having those issues, but if you don't have those issues, then scale back and sort of allow your skin to breathe, allow your skin to mellow out a little bit and um, sort of take stock of how you how your skin is behaving right now versus what you were doing two months ago. For me, I tend to be oily in my T-zone and the rest of my face tends to calm down. If I haven't had any experimentation or um, adverse effects to any products that I've been trying, generally my skin will treat me well. It, if you're going through that time of the month where you may have some hormonal breakouts. I don't change my entire skincare regimen due to that. I know that is a temporary thing and I may use some drying agents to dry up any breakouts. I may increase the exfoliation in order to get the dirt, debris, and bacteria up and out of my skin during that portion of time of the month or the season and so on but I'm not going to treat my entire face to something that I might have an issue with in my, in my you know, jawline or in my chin. And that tends to be where we find the hormonal breakouts. So I won't take those same products all over my skin because it's not necessary all over my skin. Maybe I find a very dry section of my cheeks for whatever reason. I'm going to pair a deeper moisturizer with something lightweight in the T-zone. I don't need something that is very heavy in my T-zone because I'm using other products to calm down the addition of moisture and oil production in my T-zone. So it's perfectly fine to sort of tailor make your skincare regimen to suit your needs. So I may use a heavier moisturizer on my cheeks. 
and then a lighter moisturizer in my T-zone. There are people that powder their entire face. There are people who only powder their T-zone and they leave the rest of their skin glowy um, because they don't need to set and powder an entire face. They may use a mattifying powder in the center, for example. So there are many different ways that you can take stock of your current regimen and either incorporate new products that you see you haven't been using before or that may need to replace something that isn't working so well for you or you may need to completely do an overhaul and say you know what I don't know what I'm doing I don't know why I was using these products and there are some people like that they're saying well I was using this because I'm just trying to finish it up but I don't think it's right for me or I got a gift from someone and I'm trying to finish it up but it's really not doing me any any benefits um, and that's okay sometimes we want to use things to not waste and that's okay but when you do have an opportunity to uh, reflect on what you're currently using uh, I want you to notice how your skin is doing and if you're in the process of experimenting yourself use one thing at a time one product at a time in order to really evaluate your skin and how it's reacting to that product they're all variables it's all a science experiment so it's important to try one sample at a time in addition to what you're regularly using so you know my skin has always acted like this with these five products for example and I've just incorporated one new product in this week how's my skin doing do I like the results have I noticed any changes you may or may not but at least if you do if you do have a reaction um, or you notice some sensitivity or maybe it's it's done something to um, show some additional dryness or the opposite spectrum to notice a positive change then you know that that can be attributed to that new product that you've chosen that week or the last couple of days and so on so I want you to give each product that you try a certain amount of time in order to be able to reflect on and notice the differences in your skin if you have any questions on how you can incorporate new products or uh, maybe reflect and change what you're currently using with the change in seasons please comment below or you can contact me in using any of my social media in the down bar below I thank you for your time for watching. Again, I'm Bahar, and I'll see you again soon.